uh, an intro kind of pre-recorded before. Anyway, man, I can't thank you enough for taking the time. Um, seriously, uh, I'm just curious, kind of just to get us really jump started here. Like, what is your main focus right now, and what part excites you the most about it? Yeah, so my my main focus right now is I'm doing sales at Gym Launch, so that's takes up most of my day. So that's taking up most of my day, and then really from there, af- after work, whenever I can during the weekends, that sort of thing. I think what excites me the most right now is just pushing the content. So getting into the content game, learning that skill set is super fun. And I'm like super excited to continue to push that and see what that'll do over the next, you know, five, 10 years. So that's the content side of things. Probably the most exciting. What I'm doing the most is still selling. I've been doing that for about two years now. Yeah. So two parts, two ways I kind of want to go here because I'm glad you mentioned that. It's interesting to hear you say like the content is what you're most excited about because would you what was your focus let's say 12 months ago just to kind of Sales. take us towards like the beginning of 2022 and how it's kind of evolved a little bit. Yeah, so it's been sales. So the biggest thing when I started in 20 it was I think January 20 or I started December 2020. That's when I started sales. And then really from there, you know, over the last 2 years it's just been my main focus until two, three months ago was just sales, getting that down, you know, being able to, when I, when I first started doing the sales stuff, I didn't even know, like it was just the next step or the next path. Cause I was losing a ton of money with my other business and I needed a way to pay for that business. And then Alex was like, you suck at sales. So I was like, yeah. okay, how do I get good at sales? And he goes, well, start getting into like, start doing sales. So I started doing sales and then really from there, it got to a crossroads. It got to a point where I knew I knew sales was the opportunity because I saw people at my company making, you know, 200, 200, 250K kind of in that range. And I was just like, okay, if I can make this much money from sales, then hopefully the next thing I can always pivot back to that business or do another business. But if I can get this skill set down, then I remember Alex telling me, he's like, you'll never make less than a you know, a couple hundred thousand a year if you learn sales. Like that's that's the next safety net because a lot of people, you know, go to school or do, do whatever they may do, um, you know, get their first job for some sort of safety net. Yeah. But then I knew if I learned this skill set, that would be, you know, the safety net. And then, you know, it kind of turned into this thing where flashback a year ago, you know, from today, I was just still fully focused and on how do I get as good as I can at sales to be able to, you know, stack this skill set in the arsenal. Yeah, no, that's super cool. Um, now on the, just the whole college side of things, uh, you kind of made an interesting comment where you're like, you're not going to meet your, you know, your multi-million dollar business partner at a bar. You go to like this, going to the same bar for four years. So when did that kind of hit you? Did it take the, I know like that there was a period of isolation kind of when you weren't going to school, like it was like the online school and you're still kind of figuring out what you want to do. Did it hit you then that you needed to find new ways to network or did that isolation just create those new kind of opportunities for you? Yeah. So I, I want to be straightforward and just be like, I got very fortunate with the connections I had. Right? right. And the reason I made that post, because obviously Alex, Alex was my neighbor when I was growing up. So I got like the best connection. And I'm super thankful and grateful for that. Mm-hmm. I made that post because, you know, a lot of my friends, said they did not value the education they were getting, but the connections that they could get from the university, right? Really from there, my counter argument is if you make yourself more valuable, you'll connect with more valuable people, right? And so since then, you know, what I've been able to do and just the connections I've been able to make, you know, you know, in the space from first saying, how do I acquire a skill set that's going to make me valuable to other people? And then I can help those other people, or I can put myself in situations, environments where those people are, right? A super yeah. simple, easy example um, to understand is if you make money, if you're good at something, you make money. Now you can hang out at nice places and then you'll bump into people at those nice places. And there'll be more people at those nice places than there will at a state university or whatever it might be. Right. Yeah. And so if you're able to build those connections, then you can invest in the masterminds, different things, you know, where you can meet those people. And then when you meet that person, you can actually provide value to them because a lot of people meet people at school and it's a good connection. Mm-hmm. 
but how are you going to benefit them unless you really work on yourself first? Yeah. Right. If you can do that, then putting yourself in different places that are prestigious, I think super valuable, but going to school for the connections, I think is, it's pretty funny because you can make yourself valuable in a ton of other ways. Yeah, no, I a hundred percent agree with that. And I think now with the, again, like time back, I'm glad you're putting a focus on content because it puts a, it provides a real need out there for more people to see it. Cause the more they see it, the more they start to buy into it. I think I want to say this as Alex that really kind of even put this in my head was about the just attention being, being everything and how like you can really build trust the more people see you and then it makes everything else like a lot easier. And it is an opportunity that's there that, like I said, I'm trying to streamline the process, you know, like take advantage because there are other ways to connect with people, even just on social media, you're an introvert. There's never, you can't tell me you can't network anymore. There's no excuse. Yeah. There's no it's, excuse. It's, it's, there's no excuse. And give me, I'm so sorry. I'm going to move this blind. I'm getting blind. Okay. You're good. This. No, but hundred percent because like you can do, you can get into anyone's inbox and then if you can figure out how to pattern interrupt their inbox and then, you know, get that connection. Like we have the internet, there's phones, there's all these different groups out there where you can connect with like-minded people, right? We don't live 20, you know, 20, 30 years ago, even 20 years ago. I, I don't know, but I think you could do this, right? But at, yeah. at the level it's at now, there's just so many different ways to connect with high level people. And then there's a lot of high level people where you can just buy their knowledge. And a lot of these people are giving it away for free. So it's like, if you can get in inside that in the content game and then, you know, all that stuff, it's just, there's a huge opportunity there for sure. There's a huge opportunity for it. And I'm glad to hear you say that because I think a big point of the podcast in general and what we're trying to even bring on the value side is providing more exposure to those people. Cause I think it's like a niche market in the digital kind of nomad space, but also just the remote work in general. Like, let's start highlighting how capable this or like how possible this actually is, because you're going to apply yourself this much dedication, the same amount of time somewhere else and not scale up. Like if the whole point is to grow, why do you go somewhere where your salary doesn't change based on how hard you work? Right. And now mm -hmm. there's the opportunity that shows you that's possible. So the, again, like there's like a no, there's like a no excuse. If you're going to complain about it. Here's the, the free value that's out there. Right. And, you know, guys like you do a very good job at just giving the honest truth about it. Like you said, dude, you're making 200 calls a day. Are you willing to do that? Yes or no? Things probably won't change. Even if you, I always say like, start with, you know, 50 and then get to a hundred. Just like, I, can you take me through that process? Was it immediately 200 a day? How did you get like warmed up to where it was like a consistent, okay, I just did 200 for a week straight. And do you remember the result? Like at the end of that? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And so during that time, like I was so, I think a lot of people try to f find productivity hacks. Like how do you be more productive? How do you push harder? That sort of thing. I was just very unhappy with my situation. Like I was so unhappy with my situation. I was willing to do whatever it takes. And I was honestly in so much pain every single day that I wanted to be able to channel that energy because energy is not, you know, destroyed it's like you you can put it somewhere else right and so during during that time period it was when i just dropped out of school like kind of it was when i hit that rock bottom moment and then i was figuring out what's going to propel me out of this and the only thing that i could do with my time other than mope around was make calls right so that was one thing where i i was at the right place at the right time in terms of you know where my mindset was at where i just pretty much immediately started making a bunch of calls. I also was fortunate to have Alex text me and say, why didn't you make 200 calls today? Why'd you make less than a hundred? That'll get you going pretty quickly if you, <laughs> if you start slipping up, right? So it's like, if you can find someone, if you can hold yourself accountable and be in a situation where you want this so bad and you can understand that it's a, it's a long-term game, it's a long-term play, you just have to do short-term sacrifice to be able to get that. Then if you do that sacrifice every single day and just make calls, make calls, make calls, it's not that tough if you put your back against the wall. If you have nothing else going on, nothing else to do. I was doing too many things all at once. People do too many things all at once because we get bored. No, just say, 
screw everything else. Let me focus in on one thing and then do this one thing more than anyone else. And then you'll be fine. Cause if you get bored, you're not going to go do something else. You'll just be like, Oh, let me just make more calls. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And I feel you because like, it's just, it's kind of the same, like this, a, this, how important this industry is really to how everything is even going, you know, on the social media aspect of it, the different ways to make money, people need to sell those ways to make money. Right. And if you have efficient people that do that, then again, it's a plug and play. Right. Um, but just through, like, I went through a period, I was like, all right, we're going to do hundred DMS a day. And then like what evolved from that was, was I was like, okay, what if I call instead of calling these people, if I'm connecting with them on Instagram, I'll do voice messages immediately saw results speak up like real person. Then like that led me down this, like, okay, let's do video messages again. Like there's ways to like level up with it. And then on the volume side, again, if I'm reaching out to like bigger businesses, again, the cold calling would be great. I just, now I'm in the place where I want to like train it, but you're exactly right. Like the vol, you said of what, like in a few other podcasts, like the volume negates luck, right? So if mm -hmm. you don't know where to go, start with just doing that same action repetitive because you know it only takes one time for you to know you can do it again like what you mm -hmm. you know i'm sure you can you can attest to that and there's no better feeling in my opinion than actually like making your own like creating your own value and then seeing it like exchanged for you know the ultimate like your ultimate goal yeah no 100 percent. and if you figure out something that works and it works for someone else and you start it and it doesn't work for you, it's probably just because you suck at it and that's okay at first. So then it's, if you can just stick to that simple one thing like cold calling and do it a whole bunch of times, it will be unreasonable for you to be good after a long period of time. Right. And so there's like so many different opportunities. There's so many different, you know, outreaches. There's so, there's so many different things you could do. A lot of the times if you can pick, and this goes from, you know, looking at a scale of a, a, a business itself. It's just like doing one business rather than five businesses, but also one function within that business, right? Because you could be running ads just like as a, as an example, ads on a whole bunch of different platforms that requires you to have different skill sets for each platform or get really good on one platform, finish that one and then say, okay, now I'm maxed out on this one. Now we can do the next one rather than doing a whole bunch of things and more or less shooting in the dark. Yeah, and you're shooting in the dark because, and I'm experiencing this, experiencing this firsthand. As like what we say is like content production and management. Like, you want to just focus on one aspect of it, and then if that does well, now you've given it like a full chance to like see. Okay, is this something we want to implement? Is this something people want? Is the price point right? And then you can okay, what is what else? What other problem or like what else are we seeing now that we can kind of capitalize off this and. A, wise counselor or like why wise like mentor of mine once told me like your current client base is like very uh they can create your newest like don't sleep on them for creating your newest income because there's just there's so many ways to kind of build systems off what you've already provided value for um but have you ever thought about like just being that you're so dialed into the really in the client acquisition side and like the sales side down the line like building out you know some sort of where you do this for other businesses, like you kind of build out your own team and say, you know, we can provide this many leads because I have the best like closers in the game. Do you ever think about like a bigger business based on this or would you want to do something completely different? It, it seems like the logical next step and I'm all about logical next steps. So it's figuring out a way. I just want to make sure whatever I do, like the, the most important thing for me is at, especially as I'm building my personal brand branding. So just making sure whatever I can do, I've done before, and then I can deliver on that very cool. well. So that's where it's, you know, figuring out what is the logical next step. And that's more of, okay, if I start creating this content, what's going to come from all the goodwill I put out in the marketplace? And then how do I build a business off of that? And so that's kind of where my, where my mind at is right now is let's just, give away as much as I can from what I've learned, you know, for free and then see what, what types of opportunities come from that. Yeah. Over a long time horizon. Yeah. No, I a hundred percent agree. And I think that's a, that's a really mature step that a lot of people aren't willing to take because all they're watching is people that have put in the work. Like they look at, you know, Logan Paul, they look at the Nelk boys, they look at these guys, Oh, they made it 
in the last year. Like, no, they just had like Trump in the last year and they just had Tate in the last year. Like, no, they've been at this for 10 years, right? Like, so if you're not, again, like if you're not willing to do the repetitive or build the, you know, like take it diligently, consistently. I mean, when was the last day you'd say like you didn't make a sales call? I think that's an interesting question, I guess, that came out of this. Like, like when you say didn't make a sales call, like didn't take a sales call? Yeah, didn't take a sales call. I, like, would you I say? mean, it's been, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I think I think I took a little trip for for spring break for a couple of days. That's the last time I really clocked off. I typically don't take any calls on Sunday. So like Sunday is the day where I reset. But mm. other than that, it's been pretty much every single day for the last two years, you know, besides leaving for a couple of days here and there and then, you know, Sunday. So <laughs> thousands and thousands, I've probably taken over 5,000 calls at this point in terms right. of like Zoom consultations, not cold calls, like sitting down on Zoom, having, you know, full on, you know, discussion with business owners. Yeah. And did you say hour, sorry, it kind of went out. Did you say hour long discussions? Yeah. I mean, our sales cycle is about an hour and a half to three hours. Yeah. Right. So it's like the first call is typically 15 to 30 minutes, depending on where the client's at. So yeah, a bit, like long days of being on zoom, really understanding people like a whole, there's been a lot of a lot of volume behind what I've done so far. And even not that much considering I've only been doing it for two years. Yeah. Now, okay. So I think that's a part that's not necessarily highlighted a lot when these, all these coaches are like, you need to get into sales and you need to start doing this like today, like take us through, you know, what somebody should expect. Is that a level you get to where you're in those, you know, those zoom hour long meetings or is that the closer kind of level here? Yeah, that's a very good question. That's a closer, you know, level. And I got a lot of people, you know, in my discord saying, Hey, I want to be a closer. I want to be a closer. I just want to go straight to closer. I'm like, don't do it. Why would you do that? You will be a better closer. If you go and you put in the work on ground zero, right? You'll understand the process a lot better. You'll be better on the phone. You will overall be a better salesperson. If you start from the bottom and work your way up. I've seen so many people come into our company, even experienced sales reps that have years of experience at big companies come into our company and not make it because they didn't go through the steps that you should go through in terms of building a solid foundation, right? So it's like anyone getting new to the game, if you can set the proper expectation of, no, you're not going to be making, you know, 15, 20, 30,000 a month in the next six months. Is it possible? A thousand percent. Should you expect that? No. Expect to work the next two years doing cold calls. Then if you do that and then you do a bunch of volume, you'll probably get there a lot quicker and then you'll win a lot faster. But if you don't, then you're not going to quit and then give up on an opportunity that can completely change your life 10 years from now. So it's just being able to go into that mindset of, I guess it's like delayed gratification because I think a lot of people want things fast. And I think that's, in, in this space, in the internet business space, I think that's potentially been the worst thing in terms of setting wrong expectations, like not setting proper expectations. Like if you set the expectations opposite, then you get kids that are really hungry, that are willing to put in the work, willing to put on the time and understand that's just, you know, kind of the stripes that you have to get to get to the next phase or next level. Yeah, no, that was a really valuable, valuable piece you just had there because I think Again, that is the really the biggest problem with with uh, just the co the social media in general because people and the fact that the age has just gotten younger and younger for how early you can see it. It's like you want like the twelve year old to like think he can he can really do it, but then there's certain things you just can't do from like twelve to fifteen that like you are gonna start thinking you can, and you're gonna get depressed that you didn't do it, and then you're gonna be eighteen and think like you got to have it figured out. Cause like, you're not going to college. Like, no, it's really about exactly like whatever you think is like the hardest work. And I've had to really grow from this just in the last year. Like whatever you think is like the boring and like the hardest work, just start doing it and then pay attention to like be receptive of like kind of the opportunities that come of it. Right. Like mm -hmm. some weeks I don't want to shoot five episodes but the amount of like just interactions I get to have and like cool experiences and connections I make, I'm like, okay, like why did I ever, like I don't get to dread that.
like you're getting put in the room with very high level people and like it's a blessing like you don't get to like dread that a lot of people would like pray to like have these like opportunities so yeah i think just learning as early as you can learn that i think see the most steps but then also do it consistently don't just do it for a month get tired get tired and then learn what happens like when you get tired so take me through that when do you feel a little bit of burnout maybe take me through an experience you maybe recently had or like how do you handle it like or you know just overall kind of balance it balance yourself to a point where you don't you know kind of feel it because you're, you're pumping a lot of volume even even now at the you know the scale you're doing it yeah i feel burnout all the time like all the time there's days where i have a literally back to back to back to back to back to back to back of sales calls and i just don't want to do it but i know i like no matter how i feel i just have to do it right because i've put myself in this position where there's no turn like this is what i'm committed to this is what i'm going to do so no matter how i feel about it it's just going it's going to happen right and you know there's other people and even like putting yourself in a position where it's like you need to count on you but there's other people counting you to make it happen then you can almost have that even if it's not real, even if it's artificial, that pressure of like, these people are looking at me and seeing what I'm going to do. Do I want to tell this? St what story do I want to tell? Do I want to tell the story of the person who just got burnt out because it got too hard? It was too tough. Or do I want to tell the story of the person who was able to overcome all those things and then, you know, really get to the next level. And I think an example where, where it was the worst and I had to learn the lesson the most was when I was going from that setter to a closer role, because I was doing at that time, I was doing three to five different jobs. I was, you know, cold calling. I was managing the calendars. I was closing these lower ticket deals. And then I guess those were really the main three that I was doing. And then the fourth would be, I was trying to close these other deals. Right. And through that process, I, you probably had this feeling where you go through the day and your mind's like all in these different places because you're doing multiple different things um, that are pulling you in each direction. So that's how my day felt eight, 10 hours a day, every single day for six months. And then on top of that, as I was going through that, I was still making all the cold calls because I had to be the top performer there. Then I was having to close these other deals and then manage everyone's calendars, reschedules for, you know, five salespeople, which if you've ever done that, it's hectic because people are rescheduling. You have to confirm, you have to send out nurture text, all that stuff. And so I was going through that process. And at the time they were like, dude, you look way too young to close deals. Like you, you look like you're 12 on zoom, right? There's no way a business owner is going to take you seriously. I'm like, okay, well, how, how do I, how do I prove you wrong? Like, how do I make it happen? And they're like, well, with, so kind of, going back a little bit, I would close personal training deals, right? right? So that we have a personal training package. It was a lower ticket, four or $5,000 for that package. And then I would also close, you know, well, I wanted to close the high ticket deals, which is B2B, right? Talking to other gym owners. And they said, no business owner is going to take you seriously. Right. And I was like, okay, well, let me try the personal trainer. So I started doing the personal trainers. I got to the point where I was closing a couple of those a week while doing all the other activities with other jobs. So I go back to them and I go, Hey, can I, can I close the other deals? I'm closing these deals. Like, I think I can do it. And they're like, mm, now you look like you're 12. And then I push for a couple more weeks and then I go ask again. And they're like, ah, you look like you're 12. Like, and who are no you asking you right seriously. now? So I was asking, you know, my manager okay. at the time to be able to do this. Right. Yeah, cool. And so I kept asking, they're like, no, hold back, hold back, keep proving yourself, whatever it might be. And then finally, I think they just got annoyed and they're like, okay, if you can do the same thing you're doing with personal trainers and close the gym owners, then go for it. Like, go do it. I'm like, okay, let's do it. And I got super hyped. I went out and then I found this guy that I actually sold gym equipment to a year previous. I texted him. I got him on a call and I closed him. And so at this point I was doing all four of those jobs for, you know, months and months and months. So I was burnt out. And then I bring this back and I was expecting them to take the other jobs off my plate. And then just put me with this one job and then I could focus on that. So I was like super hype, super pumped. Finally, I was going to, you know, take, take two days off, take the weekend off reset and then just crush this other job. And they yeah. go, eh, bring us another. I still don't think business owners will take you seriously. And I was like, what? They're like, no, bring us another. So then I went, went back to it. I was doing all the different things and I brought them another. And then when I brought them another, they go, eh, bring us another. 
I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah, bring us another. And like, I've talked so like to karate this, kid shit right now. <laughs> I know. I was just like, what do you mean? Bring another the fence, go, dude. They're like once, <laughs> once you get three, you can do it. So then I brought three back and they go bring me another. And I was just like, wow. And I, I remember I, I was on the call with my manager at the time. And yeah. I'm, by the way, I'm super grateful that they did this yeah. because I didn't deserve shit. Gotcha. I didn't deserve anything because I didn't prove myself. Like they were testing me to see if I could prove myself because yeah. I'm a 19 year old kid. Everyone else is 30. Why, why would yeah, they anyone, like, just like, they're like anyone can get one deal. That's been setting appointments for, you know, the last six months. No, I, I respect the hell out of it. Um, I'm curious. What was your, how consistently were you bringing? Like how quickly did you go from like one to three? Was it getting to a point where you're just like, all right, fuck it. I have to do this in a day. Or was it just like every other day, like every other week? I don't remember exactly, but at the end, I remember, I think I did like two or three in a week and then I came back and then like, we watched the call as a company. Like we have our company meetings where we watch calls and they watched the call and they're like, okay, this, this kid sounds like a man. And then I got on the call with the CEO the next day, he pulls up the paperwork and it was like 150,000 OTE, which was crazy for me at the time because I just dropped out of college, you know, six, seven months earlier, losing a ton of money. And then I was like at this point where average graduate makes what 55 K a year. And then I tripled that and I was super pumped. Yeah. And then as soon as I got excited about it, I just got super scared that I was going to fail at the next thing. So then I just went right back into it. Gotcha. Yeah. Interesting. No, that's really cool. I'm glad to you took us through that because I think that's a really important part of the story because it's like, are you willing to put yourself through that? And when you're looking at the people that you respect and like your mentors, and I want to ask you a kind of an off key question about that in a second, but like 99% of them did the work that just so many, like nine, again, 99% of other people don't want to do. I live by like this 1% rule, just like kind of subconsciously all the time. It started with me just even running track and always being like, the reason I did it was because like, there's 4,000 kids in that school and there's eight guys out here. And I just thought that was like the sickest thing. I was like, I'm willing to like, you know, take my limit like here. And now it's like just replicating kind of in the, in the business realm. But that's what I'm saying. Are you willing to like do that? Are you willing to find the people and then they give you a game plan? And then again, consistently do it. Cause you did this for what, it was like what, eight months before you had the, before you earned the, the OTE of just doing those, you know, eight, nine hour days. Yeah, it was like six, six, eight months. Six, eight months. I'd have to check exactly. It was like in that time frame. Yeah. And it was, yeah. So it was, yeah, it was a lot of work. And I think like to your point, the only reason people are not successful is because they quit. Like if you just never quit for a long enough time horizon, you're going to be successful and whatever you define success like is, is, is different right? You know, there's different degrees and different opportunity vehicles that you can be in and that sort of thing. Yeah. But if you never quit at the thing that you want to be good at, then you'll probably get good eventually. Most likely it'd probably be reasonable to assume that. Yeah. No, oh, cool. Yeah, dude. Now can you, what about like out, outside, you know, like influences that you respect, maybe not in the sales game, just like other creators, how they run their business. Is there anyone you kind of watch and are just like, you know, like I really kind of pull value from what they're doing. Yeah. So, I mean, I think in terms of, you know, other creators out there, of course, Alex, Layla, they're, they're crushing it. I think someone who's really crushing it in the content space, like specifically in the business space, Iman Godzi, I mean, he's, cr he's crushing it with content. He had that, you know, little slip up or mishap, but, He's been crushing it for the last couple of years. He's been doing this for what, 10 plus years at this point, right? Yeah. He's a younger guy, but he's been doing it for a long time. Yeah. But there's definitely, you can take, it's my belief that you can take something good from, from anyone that's like playing the game at a high level, whether you like them or not, there's just like different things that you can, you know, pull from them, pull from their strategy, that sort of thing. Like Andrew Tate, he's crushing it. He's very controversial, right? But then even if you aren't a fan of what he does, what can you learn from what he's been doing? Probably yeah. a lot, right? So there's there's a bunch of different, you know, people out there, I think that are crushing it, um, you know, in this space. And then everyone, if you, you can probably find something that's beneficial or valuable 
you know, that would, that would at least help me out. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And it's Iman I've been on since I was, since I was like 17. So I always like just found it similar. Cause I think he's only like 22 or 23. I, I he's think. crushing it. Yeah. yeah. And he's just like perfect example of like, I have this situation, but I'm going to make the most out of it. And I've literally, I think that's what clicked for me at 17 that I always respected. And it's like, it hasn't changed since then. I'm like this guy, like so many things when you hear his story, like could have went south. But instead, he just, again, Yusuf, as Phil said, somehow figured out that if I put this on and people relate to it, you know, maybe they can help me. And maybe, you know, I'm sure it helped. He found his connections through putting it on YouTube, showing people, hey, this is what I'm going through. And, like, I'm willing to, like, showcase that I'm going to make the most out of this. And, like, there's no other option. Like, if I don't do this, like, me and my mom are, like, necessarily in trouble, like, to my understanding. Right? So I always respected that. And that just now... What he's done. Can you talk to me about uh, GCC with Iman at all? Like, get into that, kind of why you joined and, you know, maybe give us a little insight into what it's like. Yeah, so I was very – when I joined, I didn't – like, in it, I didn't know what NFTs – I knew what NFTs were, but I didn't really understand the technology. And then I watched his video, and it just made a ton of sense how it worked. Um, and, like, the way he described it made a ton of sense, and I saw the – you know, real life utility or real life value there. And then I went through, you know, their entire process and I just, I was, I was like, this process is genius. Right. So like going through the, you know, the discord, you know, all that sort of thing, you know, jumping on the different calls, I just knew they knew what they were doing. And of course I've been following Iman for whatever, for, you know, a long time. And so when there was the ability to connect with a, a lot of like-minded people, kind of going back to the college connections thing, like once you become valuable and you get a skill set that turns into money, now you can buy yourself into these rooms with, I'm the brokest guy in there. Like <laughs> I'm, these people are seven, eight figure business owners, right? And that's the places I want to be is being able to invest in those you know situations where now I can be a part of all these people that are doing or playing the game at the next level. And then, you know, hopefully over time I can get to that level as well. Yeah. No, Iman's a definitely a, a goal for me to get on, get on the podcast just because I think my, just how everything kind of panned out with how like I started to sell stuff for people, but now I've really dive, dove into this digital marketing space. And I've always kind of been like this networker and like just kind of how it all pulled together, but him always having that, his viewpoint on the world really started to transition and it's how I found Arlen. It's kind of funny, like, mm-hmm. which also led me to this conversation. So like, I'm just yeah. very thankful for like that. He showcased it at his age. A lot of guys, like you look around, they're like 26, 27, very cool where they're at. Like, you know, he's been putting it on since he was like 15 and you can go to those videos. But great. You're 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Like even now you're a high successful, you know, seven, eight figure entrepreneur. You can still learn a lot from Iman. And I think he knows yeah. that. Like it appeals to, you know, just about everyone. He's stayed true to kind of what he does, and that's why. Like you're just kind of seeing the the involvement. You want to be on that level, start doing the little things these guys do. You know, um, big thing. Hundred percent. And then for anyone feeling bad if they're you know older than him and not doing as well or his age or, you know, that sort of things. Like he's been doing it for ten years, like consistently. He's put in the work. You haven't. That's why he's successful and you're not, right? So it's like if you can take that mindset, I think that's, you know, super valuable or beneficial to say, well, if I start now, 10 years from now, this is what is possible. Yeah. Right. And then no, very you just cool. kind of break your limiting beliefs. Yeah, definitely. That's like a huge thing. And like how you can I think and you can probably relate to this, when you do start putting the steps in front of each other and you do start getting just consistent you start to see the, the, the small like successes. Now, can you take me mm-hmm. through, like, I think a lot of guys, they get to like 5k. Can you take me through like something you did maybe from 5k to 10k that, you know, sparked that. And then, you know, what was like the next benchmark for you after that? Or did it all just kind of happen naturally? Like, you know, bigger check. And then, you know, from there. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, if you, continue to do the, th- the thing and stay on the same path, mm-hmm. 
then you start to catch that momentum and those wins and then those wins just start stacking up. And then you start like, for me, if I was going to give you the super simple answer answer, I started selling more expensive stuff. There you go. Like yeah. the, the, the price, like I went I from it. setting to selling mm-hmm. is the audio kind of cutting out. No, you're good. Sweet. Yeah. I went from setting to selling to selling more expensive stuff. Right. So it's just like being able to stay on that same path and trajectory. I think Alex says this a lot, like a bad plan is a plan that you change all the time. Like if you can just pick one thing and stick to it and then commit to it and then put your back against the wall and say, this is the only option I have, then you'll probably be successful at it rather than FOMOing into, you know, every single other opportunity. Cool. Now I want to hear about, uh, like what has been maybe like your most favorite now that you've dove and started to dive more into the social media space, maybe what's been the coolest connection you've gotten to make since you, you know, like we talk about the small wins, like I'm sure, mm-hmm. you know, just random stuff kind of happens all the time when you're consistent. So like, yeah. Can you take me to like an experience that's kind of come out of this just from you being consp- uh, kind of like taking it consistently, maybe somebody met or like a good interview or something. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. So I have like a full circle story for you. Okay. Um, when I was a sophomore, you know, sophomore, junior in, in high school, me and my, you know, roommate, we used to always watch Scott Hilsey. Right. And I, are you familiar with him? I'm not. He does drop shipping. So he was okay. like one of the OGs in drop shipping. And that's what really put me on to the online business stuff. Like I'd watch his videos. We'd watch him literally in math class trying to figure out how we drop ship. We'd be building our stores, like that whole thing. And so, I watched him for a couple of years. I actually, I tried drop shipping for like four years on and off, but I never committed to it. I never was like, this is what I'm going to do. I build a store a couple months, then I'd quit. Build a store a couple months, I quit because I was comfortable. I didn't have to put my back against the wall for anything, right? There was no, nothing pushing me to take that next step or go to that next level. And then my senior year in high school, I got a concussion playing football and that like, I honestly felt like I was dumb for like six to eight months. It was crazy. But that got me to a point where I had nothing else going on. And I was like, I need to make something happen, make something work. I have to go to college in a couple months and I don't want to go. And so it was like a Black Friday sale. I bought his program. I jumped into his program. And then I was failing and failed so many drop shipping stores before that. And then the first month I did 4K. The next month I did you know 18. The next month I did 35. Right. So then I just like scaled that store pretty aggressively. And then of course the world shut down. So my store got shut down because all my products were being shipped from China. Yes. Very, very (laughs) so real. It shows you how realistic and like, just, you got it, you know, just having that awareness, like you never know why, what kept pulling you back to drop shipping? Did you just think it was the quickest way? And like, you can be honest here. Like, did you think it was like the simplest way to, to your goals mm-hmm. or maybe what goal did you see drop shipping like achieving like for you when you kept like kind of going back to it? Millionaire in 90 days. Like I could Millionaire just, like, in 90 days. The world. I could be on the beach chilling on my laptop. Because all you got to do is plug like... ads and have a product and it makes you a million dollars, right? That's three steps. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So that, that was, that's what I thought it would do for me. And like, I don't love the business model anymore just because like, if you don't provide a good product, you're never going to build an actual business. Yeah. Right? And a lot of like, there's, there's a drop shipping now where you can get good products and all that sort of thing. Um, I, but anyways, I think kind of going back to the point of that story is, you know, after I posted my first YouTube video, he was actually in Austin and then we connected, we went to go eat, we had a great time. And it was like a full circle moment. Cause I remember, you know, years and years ago, I was watching his content and this his is, content was one of the, uh, Scott, Scott. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So his content got me into the stuff. And then, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was actually able to like meet him and hang out with him. And it was just like a cool experience. That was like a full circle moment from a connection I met from the content. Yeah. No, sick. And that just, again, highlights the power here. If you get your stuff in front of more people and you have a good product, it, you know, it's not saying it's that easy. You got to do the logistics side of it and, you know, really give a shit about what you're doing, but okay. It's up to the people at that point, you know, yes, I can gain value from this. No, I can't. You need to go back to work. Like it's just, yeah. You know. 
Um, <laughs> now, I... Okay, I want to know... We'll get back to, like, the Renaissance. I want to talk about this Renaissance Man thing a little bit. Open the eyes to some people um, for some opportunities. But I do want to refer back to really where I found you. So it was like... Mm-hmm. I just had got put on to Arlen. Again, that's the root of Iman, and I always tell this story, but just uh, a really good friend of mine, she sent me Arlen. She's like, you kind of look like this guy. And I was like, what is she talking about? Like, just on Instagram, and I click <laughs> it. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then he had a picture with Iman. I was like, dude, I've seen him in his videos, like, just as one mm-hmm. of those, like, background characters. And I always kind of wondered, like, oh, who is that guy? And it turns out it's just, like, you know, dove right into what he was doing. Like, the course builder stuff, super cool. Uh, just this whole kind of memo of educating and, you know, building off that um, and then creating experiences with tribe and, you know, the whole thing. But what I wanted to pull from that um, on, uh, sorry, on Arlen's podcast, uh, where was it here? Um, there was something you said that, really stood out to me. Oh, a social circle for college dropouts. Talk to me about that idea. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's what, if you join Arlen's community, that's, there's a bunch of those in there. Yeah. But like there's, yeah, yeah. And I, like, if you go in, I feel like those communities are building everywhere. I love, I mean, Arlen's community is sweet. There's a lot of cool guys I met, you know, very cool guys, you know, within that community, just from his network, you know, like yourself. But I think there's, there's so much opportunity to find like-minded people in your area if you just look Mm -hmm. right. And even, you know, something like the, like my sales discord, there's a bunch of kids that are looking to move into each other. Like it's free discord, that sort of thing. You just have to apply that little plug there. Right. But um, there's so many of those communities, whichever ones you join, like you can just hop in, start meeting people that are like-minded, start networking with them, jump on a quick call, whatever it might be. And then now you have someone that's like-minded on the same mission or same path as you. Yeah. Or it's like, even if you want to go, if you want to take the sales route and you want to go sell like solar pest, like whatever it might be, they'll ship you out to a house full of kids with the same mindset looking to grind. And then you can go make a couple hundred thousand dollars with a bunch of kids that want to do the same thing. So there's like so many different opportunities that you can say, Hey, I don't have to, you know, go to school to find a social circle. And then on top of that, why do you need a social circle right now when you won't even want to hang out with those people when you get to where you want to go? Yeah. That makes sense. No. Because there's, if you you make yourself more valuable, then you're going to build a more valuable social circle rather than hanging out with people that maybe aren't aligned and, you know, potentially could be holding you back from what you really want to do. Yeah, no, I think you're hitting it right on the nose because I talk about this a lot and it's like because just me framing my mindset has been so important to just even the the growing level that I'm at now is when you you have to tune yourself to a certain frequency and you kind of just when you know, you know, when you're in the room with just high level people that are putting in the work that have put on the work that, you know, just represent value and present themselves it's like they present themselves a certain way. Like I can't explain it, but it's been a blessing just living in Miami and having this like, it's a very invitable place. Like, Hey, let's just, let's chat, you know, collaborate a little bit. And those are the guys, like the conversation is completely Mm -hmm. different. Look at the conversations you're having now. Think about the conversations you should be having. And by doing the thing like you should be doing, those people tend to come around. It's just, that's what you're starting to attract kind of into your life. Um, But that's been, yeah, it's been super important. I think like providing the value on the end of it, dude, but when I provide content, more stuff tends to open up and I'm sure you've seen this, mm-hmm. but like it's natural. Like I'm showing that this is what I'm thinking and more of that energy is coming back to me. These people want to help me now. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And that's where it's <clears throat> like when I dropped out of school, I didn't, I didn't make any new friends for a while like two years, like I've recently started making new friends and growing my social circle. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had to go through that Rocky cut scene phase before I felt like I would find the people that I'd want to actually spend a lot of time with. And then of course, to your point with the content that just shows them that you exist. Right. And then they're like, Oh, this guy's pretty cool. Let's connect with him. Yeah. Nah, sick, man. Um, now we're getting some more of the, uh, it's kind of, 
outdoor questions, you know, as we tend to wrap this up pretty soon. Um, so what is one quality that you appreciate and kind of see in Alex that isn't showcased in his content necessarily? It's a tough question to answer because his content's so real. Okay, good. I don't blame like his, like Not a bad he, answer. Yeah, yeah he, he is who he is in his content. So it's like there's – he's just very – like he's very loyal. Like if he'll stick up for – like if you roll with him, he's got your back. And I think that's something that's, you know, super cool. I do think that's shown in the content, the way he speaks, that sort of thing. But if I wanted to emphasize something, um, that would be one of them. Okay. No, very cool. Um, now, take me through a day in the life a little bit. What is it like? You know, we talk about you got to do the little things, right? Okay, I want to be, you know, a six-figure sales closer. What do I have to, what am I, what should I kind of be expecting? How do you kind of go about your, your day? You know, like when does it start? And, you know, take me through that. Yeah, so it's cha- it's changed over time. So keep that okay. keep that in mind. Fair. Yeah. It's, and when I say that the activities I'm I'm doing, in the times that I'm not on the calls are different, right? So like, for example, I wake up at six, six thirty. my first meetings at seven. That's an hour long training with the team. From there, I take a walk. I get ready for the day, which is just clearing my head a little bit, grabbing a coffee and then boom, I'm on calls from, you know, eight 30 to nine all the way till four or five, depending on the day. Right. And those are, that's like my time dedicated to sales calls, sales calls, sales calls, working pipeline. And if you know you don't know what, or someone listening to this doesn't know what pipeline means, just the people that you haven't closed yet, trying to get them back on and you know get a deal from them or help them out, whatever it might be. And so after that, then I'll hit the gym and then I'll come back. And right now, this is where the things would change. Right now I'll work on content, doing things for the discord, that sort of thing you know, at night, and then just go to bed and repeat. Before when I was trying to close or, you know, really dialed into, I need to be doing everything I can to be competent at the skill set. When I got back, I'd watch people's game tape, like other people sell at my company, you know, watch sales training, that sort of thing. Like that's where I'd spend those couple hours at night and then wake up and repeat. Very cool. Now, I really appreciate you sharing how it's changed because the schedule when you need to dial in this skill, and I think I've heard you mention this about how like, Again, it relates back to if you're thinking about building a business, it is a great skill set to have on the on the sales end of it. And once you build that and you kind of feel like, you know, you should start sharing your experience. Now the outlet is there and you can kind of just pick which one you want. If you want to go on YouTube, which is obviously what I recommend, because that's what we do with creators and we automate the process. No plug there. Um, But like. Also, if you want to be professional, put it on LinkedIn. I'm starting to get more, like bring this more like positive energy to LinkedIn yeah. and showcase the professionals. Like, hey, this is what I do. Showcase that you're a good sales closer, you know, the types of stuff you're doing. Um, and now there's there's the alley for it. So I think you're killing it in that aspect. Um, what it, would you say your biggest weakness is right now? Biggest weakness? I think the the biggest weakness is thinking I'm better than I am. I think that's like the, like the constant thing that like ego is the enemy. Like you can struggle with like, Oh, you did a good video or you did whatever it might be. It's like, dude, I I still don't know that much stuff. Like I'm 21 years old. Like I can pretend I know a lot of things, but I don't know that much stuff. So I think it's something that, you know, I constantly want to check myself on is like, just keep doing the work, keep doing the things and don't get ahead of yourself and, you know, make yourself, you know, or make myself get in the way by yeah. thinking, oh, I know this stuff. Oh, I know all that stuff. So I think that's something that's huge. Yeah. We relate a lot on that. So it's cool. <laughs> um, now one thing, okay. What do you do? Diff- what do you think sets you apart? I mean, being like one of the top, cause you're obviously pretty open in your discord, like, being one of the top guys at gym launch, what do you think sets you apart from, you know, other sales closers just in general? Like, is there a certain thing like you can kind of point it to? Yeah, I think just volume, like wanting it more than anyone else, Mm. I think is the thing that's going to get 
the most people what they want. Like at, at first there was nothing else on my mind rather than like getting to, you know, being in the top, the top couple of clothes. Like that was the thing that I wanted to do. Right. Okay. And so I didn't have in, any other things that were distracting me from that. So I was just young. I'm, I am young, hungry. And then I would just put in the work to showcase, you know, what I was feeling. So I think that's, if you want something more than anyone else, and then your actions follow that, mm-hmm. like, I think anyone can be very good at what they do if they, if they just kind of follow those steps. Yeah. hundred percent. I think a big theme here has just been really dialing in, you know, the consistency end of it and be willing to suck at it. And like you highlight that in a lot of your content. And I think it's super important is like, you should be willing to just, if you're new, like you said, if you're new to it, you're not going to be super great at it, but it's going to be like that mm-hmm. with anything. If you go get a new job, you're going to suck at the new job for the first <laughs> two weeks yeah. anyway. And I'm sure you sucking at this and closing one deal after 200 calls is much better than sucking at that and like not having anything affected, like possibly losing your job, to be honest. Um, but cool, man. Uh, now I want to dive into the book a little bit. Um, and you'll know which one I'm talking about. Uh, it's like, how do you feel or like, how do you currently get your feeling of importance? What book is this? This is the, uh, I'm literally, uh, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I was reading it literally this morning. Uh, it's the, God damn. Even, uh, Alex was like, you read this one book, you'll be successful like 10 times over. I just, I should have read it down. Is it the way of the wolf? Uh, no, it is. How to win friends and influence people. How to win friends people. and influence people. Thank you. That was, that was so yeah. bad. But yeah, they talk big on that. Like, People's whole goal, and I've used this in sales, I'm sure you have too, is they want to feel mm. important. Like our whole goal, everything we're kind of like doing at the end of the day is we want to feel like important to the, you know, what we're putting out. And when you provide a lot of value, well, like that's a, that's one way to do it. But on your end of it, I'm sure, and in the sales world, like the more we kind of make the customers feel like that way, I tend to see better success. So I kind of want to see like, how do you currently get your feeling important to what kind of triggers that for you now? Yeah. I think the, the thing that triggers it for me the most right now is showing other people that this, like what I'm doing is an opportunity that they can do. Cool. And then just giving away as much as I can for that. And, and the reason being is I went to New York like last week and I saw all these people riding the subway that just looked like they were like NPCs. Like they, they didn't even want to exist. It felt like, like they, it felt like they didn't have a soul and it just, you know, so many people get put into this system where they're unhappy and it's like, there's ways to break free from that system. So I get my feeling of importance. I think right now, currently for showcasing this and, you know, helping other people, get jobs and start their opportunity and start their journey and at least inspire in some sort of way to say, like, you don't have to do what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. There's different paths to be able to get the freedom that you want and do the things that you want to do. But there's a lot of sacrifice as well that that has to go into that at first. And it's not going to be easy. And the reason it's not easy is because, I mean, if it was easy, everyone would do it, right? So you have to take the risk. You have to do the things that other people won't do. No, hundred percent. And now just before we get into the last few questions here, there's a question in the chat. It's actually one of my, my guys from my teams. Thank you, uh, Omar for checking in, but he says, when you guys cold call, how do you find people to call? Yeah. So typically if you work at a company, they'll have lead lists. So they'll give you a list. You'll have an auto dialer. You just call, right? So someone else is in charge of actually finding the list. When I was doing, I was also doing like cold DMs on Instagram because that's, I had to go out and hunt and find my own people. So that would just be looking at Jim Launch's followers, going and finding prospects that way. When I was cold calling at my own business, because before I started cold calling for Jim Launch, I was doing real estate wholesaling. There was different techniques that you could buy lists, you could buy data lists. So if you're, if you're not working at a company that has those lists or whatever it might be, just Google research, like there's different platforms that you can buy lists on to have their names and numbers and then get an auto dialer because you won't have to type them all in, you know, to your phone. You can just ring, ring, ring. And it, it makes it a whole lot easier to make 200 calls when you do that. Interesting. So where can we find, uh, what's like an, 
is there an auto dialer you'd recommend? Honestly, I have no idea. Okay, I, I didn't know. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna. I honestly want to take notes for my, for my own business here. Um, auto dialer, interesting, cool, man. Um, now there is. Uh, okay, now here's one we do. So, what are two questions you have for the host? What is your, like, who do you want to be in 10 years? What does that look like? I would say I love, hate this question. Uh, so 10 years, you know, I think the last guest asked me this too. It's, I want to be happy with what I've, like, just created. I want to be happy that I've, I'll be, I picture myself really family building at that point. I see, like, just my 20s as a time to create as much value as I can when I'm ready, you know, just opening it up to someone I share it with. And then from there, like we scale and like, we kind of just go and then I'm ready to have a kid and I can give him like a legit and I'm putting him because I'm speaking out there, like a good platform to kind of build from. And I want to have fun, you know, like it, have fun throughout it. So like in 10 years, it's what I'm building now, what I'm creating, you know, did I provide enough value to put myself in a position to, you know, give my, you know, a good, kid a good life because I, I don't get it too far into specifics i just like i see it all playing out as a result of you know the the output like you say and yeah i know the opportunities to kind of be there if you stick at something for 10 years consistently it's just like you know who knows what could happen but i'll be happy i'm sure i'll be happy with it 100 percent, 100 percent. that's awesome and yeah. what so my next question is what skill set what two skill sets are you currently focusing on developing the most 100% is I've had a, and I said this in the last one too, like I've built a great framework and a great network and a great, like I have a good content plan. Like I've connected with the right people to learn a lot while selling, but just learning to sell by doing and not necessarily mm -hmm. ever taking the time to learn from someone who's actually crushed it. And now I'm in a place where I'm like, okay, I'm okay. Taking more of a step back, really dialing in learning and then you know, seeing where we can scale from there. And I also love the, just, you know, I love the business aspect of it and just paying attention to what the market's doing. Client acquisition, I think is a multi-billion dollar business. And if you can get around people that know what they're doing and get good offers, you can scale that. And who doesn't want somebody that can just generate leads? Now people can focus on the ideas and they can mm -hmm. plug and play and generate what they need to now execute those ideas because there's so many guys like yourself and then training other people like in your discord that are going to learn this skill set, And that's what we need more of, right? We have more online sellers. We need more. So we have more online products. We need more online sellers. So yeah, yeah. I guess that was like kind of the, the long loop of the, the question is I'm focused on sales and then just overall, you know, systems management, like constantly building systems to make my life easier. That's dope. That's dope. And Omar dropped a question in the chat. Okay. Most appointments I've set yeah. is cool. 12 to 15, somewhere around there wow. nice. in a day. Cool. Yeah, it was it was exciting. Um, how much did your average a month as an appointment setter? I was making between... So appointment setting specifically, I'd have to check these numbers. I'm not 100% sure, but I would say between five and 8,000. I was making it as an appointment setter. I was appointment setting because I still remember when I hit my first $8,300 month, which was like the six figure run rate. So that was like a cool moment. Um, I was doing some closing for the lower ticket thing. So I think I was making like five to seven, somewhere around there. Cool. No, it's very realistic. And I think for guys, dude, you're 18, 19, 20 years old. You're telling me you can hop in for, you know, that's between 60 and almost six figures a year, right? And you're just looking at, you're yeah. like, dude, I know this is what we've been talking about. <laughs> like, I know, like it's very, it's very realistic and you can be comfortable with that. Get really good, like he says, get really good at appointment setting, kill that 5K a month. Again, like average college tuition like, or college you know, income when you come out is like 55K and not for nothing. I'm just watching like my own people kind of go through it. It's not very easy to just get a job right out of college. Like your degree, like I've heard you say before, like doesn't guarantee you anything like it, it doesn't so if you're in it make the most of it like that's always my, my opinion i won't regret going but do i think i could do what i'm doing now 
at a higher level at a younger age if I just invested in that aspect and moved myself to Miami to put myself in the environment? Yes, 100%. But now we can, you know, let's combine the two and like, great, you know, like, fuck it. Um, now, finally, this is like a big one we like to ask, how do you want to be remembered? Someone who gave more than they asked. Hell yeah. Yeah, I think that's 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 something I would... At this point in time, I think that's the best, that's the best answer that I can give. Okay. No, I like that. I think that's a big, I think that's a big purpose for all of us. Um, okay, man. Now, finally, like, uh, any 2023 predictions, um, that you want to make, I would say anything, if it's in the business industry, great, but just any Mm -hmm. 2023, like make your call kind of thing. I want to kind of implement this. (laughs) I'll make the stretch call. I'm coming for a million on YouTube. Let's no, you know, on YouTube. All right. You heard it here first. The weekly profit. I'm clipping it and I'm posting <laughs> it. It's going to pop. Okay. Word. And then what surprised you about 2022 overall? What'd you say? The con- content game. Content crazy. game. It's blew cool. up. Yeah. yeah. Facts. All right, man. Well, I seriously appreciate you taking the time I'm gonna cut the, the recording now. If you want to plug yourself in, where can we find you? And uh, what do we have to look forward to coming from, from Jacob Hopkins? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram, Jacob Hopkins, YouTube, Jacob Hopkins. Um, go there. I'm trying to give as what, much stuff away for free as possible, giving away free game, free content, all that sort of thing. Apply for the Discord, that sort of thing. Again, all free. I'm just here to get you guys jobs, get you guys started in the game. I do not currently have a way to make money off of this, which probably sounds stupid, <laughs> but I'm being transparent. I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah, you got um, nothing to sell us. Yeah. <laughs> nothing to sell right yeah. now i'm sure i will there's yeah. i'm definitely in this to make money but not yet yeah. so yeah that's that's where you can find me um and yeah i right. appreciate you today this is awesome yeah man no i think we got something out of that